Morning guys, it's about 5.30 in the morning I believe. It's still dark outside as you can see back there. Um, today I want to talk about uh, this latest bulk buy I just did. Um, it did not turn out good at all. It's not always uh, rosy out there. I want to definitely share um, my losses, not just my wins, but my losses as well because they're real at the end of the day. Um, so I got, uh, I'll be glancing down here and there because I wrote down a few things that I want to cover and some numbers in particular. Um, so I found this source uh, through a friend of a friend. Um, I went out. It's a, it was a six and a half hour drive for me to get to this place. And uh, what I, you know, what I ended up doing was I just wanted to make a, a trip out of it. So I brought my father-in-law with me. Um, we drove from, I'm in Austin, Texas to Louisiana. Um, took, you know, I think it was seven and a half hours actually uh, in the truck. And it was like pouring rain on the way there. It's actually pretty pretty dangerous uh, for most of the drive and I don't know if you've ever done that drive but there you're basically on a bridge over water for about 25 miles so that made it extra sketchy but we got there safe and sound uh, but anyways we got there and uh you know, everything looked great. Um, these in particular uh, Gaylords were smaller than usual. Um, actually, let me show you guys here. Let's, let's go to the warehouse. Let me show you what they look like. So, yeah, I mean, if you've never done bulk, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. So let me show you here. So these are the size of the one I bought. They are... Uh, 48 by 48 by 27 high 27 inches high that includes the pallet um and so i bought a ton of them i bought uh 24 of them some were broken down but uh these are the small ones and then these are those are the normal size pal um gaylords and those are 48 by I think they're 48 by 40 by 48. So, you know, it's almost like double the size basically. So my um, my average cost per Gaylord for a normal size is $75. So, you know, I had a baseline obviously of what I wanted to pay for these, um, which in my mind would be about half because they're half the size, right? Well, you know, what I thought about and realized was that actually most of the time, you know, if you have a really good source, maybe they fill yours up full. But when I buy the big, really big ones, they're almost never full. They're like, I mean, a lot of them are half full, actually. Um, so my mind was like, well, actually, it's kind of, you know, if I get a full small one, it's going to be pretty close to buying a full, uh, you know, that's half, half filled. So Anyways, the price I negotiated was uh, $43 a box. Um, so we went out there, got 24 like I said. Um, that came out to actually didn't do that part of it. He gave me, he actually gave me two for free, and I'll tell you why. So I only paid for 22 So it was $946. And after the truck and gas, I ended up uh, paying $1,300 for the trip. Um, and then it came out to $2.50 per book. Now, so I, I jumped ahead too fast there. So we get there, they look good. Um, I'm watching the whole process. He takes me through the whole warehouse, which is good. Like if you ever, if you ever go to a new source, like a bulk source, like have them show you around, get a, get a sense of like what's going on around there. Ask, uh, where do they, where do these books come from? Like, you don't want books that are, you know, they're, oh, well, we're, we're getting duds from people that are FBA seller. I mean, come on, like, you gotta use your head when you're trying to figure this stuff out. So basically what you wanna look for, let me just tell you what you wanna look for, is you want places that are, they are single donation spots where like people, like a Goodwill. So. You know, you're cleaning out your house or whatever, you bring in a donation, you just offload it to someone like this. Um, this thrift store was one of the biggest thrift stores in the South. 
So they get, uh, they have two locations. They get a ton of donations, single donations. So that was great right off the bat. I was excited about that. Um, and he, uh, in particular, he, on a, he doesn't work with any bulk FBA buyers. And I think he had one person, like the biggest buyer he had was, he told me a guy has been buying one Gaylord. He started buying one Gaylord a week and then he went to like one every other day. Now he's buying one every day. Um, so that's the most experience he's ever had with anyone buying these from him. Um, so anyways, I took the risk. I bought them. You know, like I said, I made a trip out of it. It was a great time. We got a bunch of oysters. We had quite a few cocktails and uh, it was a good time. We, we stayed the night. I uh, got the hotel on points, which was nice. Um, so I get back and we offload everything. It was super, super sketchy. Like, so here's another thing real quick. Uh, you would think in an operation like that, they would have forklifts and or stackers like I have. Like I have a, an electric stacker out there, which is like so handy. It's It was like the best purchase I've ever made. Um, you think they'd have that? They didn't. So these things were stacked three high and they barely made it under the lift gate. And, uh, like when they were loading them, they almost fell over on people like several times. I mean, it was like, it was so sketchy. I was, you know, my heart was stopping watching them load several times. And so like, you know, just make sure wherever you're going, like that worked at the end of the day it worked but just make sure wherever you're buying from like you need to know like do you have a dock well i can back the truck up to like do you have a forklift how how are you going to load these into my truck you know if i hadn't had a lift gate on that truck we wouldn't have been able to do that um and you might think that's some stupid no-brainer but it's actually not he uh he actually told me that the guy originally uh this other guy who was getting, you know, like I said earlier, like one at one every other day. When he first came there, he came in a U-Haul truck. And he's like, you know, we can't, you know, we can't get these in your truck. We don't have a lift gate um, available. Um, and he's like, well, let's just toss them in manually. So they're tossing books in manually into this truck, which is totally inefficient. So anyways, just, you know, do your research, figure out what the deal is. If, if it's a warehouse manager, they should know you know those details so make sure and ask them about that and also if you don't need a lift gate and they have a dock well or you know basically a place where here's the warehouse level you can back the truck up right into it and they can just roll like a forklift or whatever in don't get a truck with a lift gate because they're cheaper and also if you get a truck with a lift gate there's going to be more room i believe uh, that will prevent the truck from going all the way back. I'm not sure about that. I have to, I have to think about that. But anyways, 100%, they are cheaper without a lift gate. So do your homework on that. So anyway, back to, you know, back to the specifics of those Gaylords. Um, I go through, uh, it was about a 12% scan rate. Now you're, you know, my first thought is like, how the heck, is it such a good scan? Like, so nine, ten percent is usually like an average scan rate, just for people that don't know. So that's a good. You should be getting if you have a source and you're getting about ten percent, that's decent. Like, so I, I wouldn't get rid of that. I think that's okay. Uh, but where I got screwed basically is like the amount of books that I even scanned like in the first place was like half of them are trash. Like I'm talking literal trash, uh, magazines, newspapers, just beat books that are beat to hell. Like they, they were terrible. So, um, you know, so it was 12, my scan rate was higher than normal, but like I said, the, the population that I was taking from was light. So I ended up getting, uh, five, something like 540 books. And that's out of, you have to understand that's out of like in those Gaylords, there's probably 500 books in each one. So if I got 24,000 books or 24 uh, Gaylords, that's 12,000 books. So out of 12,000 books, I got like 540, which is 
That's crazy. And again, that doesn't mean I scanned all 12,000 of, of them to get the scan rate. I ended up, I probably threw away like six to 8,000 bucks in the trash directly. Didn't even bother looking at them. Just, I knew they were trash. Like when you do this a while, you know what's, what's like, something like this. Some crappy little short novel. Most of the time they're romance. These are absolute trash, you know. You got these coloring books that have a bunch of crap in them from kids, you know. Uh, here's some more. These, so these are all from the load that I kept, by the way. Like, look at how dirty these are. Like, they, those can't even be cleaned. Um, and uh, oh, here's one more. Here's one more. I mean, that, this belongs in the trash, for sure. Um, so anyways. Uh, so, yeah, I wasn't mad about it at all. It was my first run. So I ended up, you know, two $2.50 a book. Um, I'm going to make money on this. I mean, it's not like I lost money. So I spent $1,300, my FBA scan metrics. I use FBA scan now. I was a big proponent of Scout IQ, and I think, I think I'm going to move back to Scout IQ, honestly. I... I really like Caleb Roth, who created Scout IQ. I think he's he's putting a lot of value and time into his products. And uh, I really, I only moved to FBA Scan because of the um, the OCR component, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically like, let's see if this book has it on it. It's a, yeah. So like, let's say, let's say this book didn't have a barcode and it just has that ISBN number. So if it only has an ISBN number, that's a manual type in and those take a ton of time. So what you would do is you go into the book and you find the ISBN that's within the book in the software, basically, just like you scan a barcode, you can hover the, the scan, the phone over the, uh, ISBN number and it'll actually extract that out and give you the data instead of manually typing it all in. So I moved to FBA scan because they had an OCR component at the time, but now Scout IQ has it. So I'll probably move back to Scout IQ, but going back to my FBA scan, they also give you a full, um, you know, set of your numbers. Like, so how many books did you scan? What was the scan rate and what was the profit of the whole batch? So my profit, I paid thirteen hundred. The profit came out to six thousand nine hundred and thirty-seven dollars, I think it was. And that's when I say profit. Okay, so here's one more thing. When you're buying bulk, you obviously don't know what you paid for the books per book because you don't know yet because you're going through, you're seeing how many. Um, greens you get out of the whole batch or whatever so you always want your buy cost at zero when you're scanning uh gaylords i don't know if people know that but i mean you you should be to get an accurate picture of what actually happened you know you'll go through it'll be at zero dollars you'll get the total profit that you that you got out of all those um in my case you know say it was 540 books let, let's see. Actually, this is interesting. So let's see what how this goes. So my average my average profit per book, and that's the money I'm getting back from Amazon. Okay, was seven dollars and fifteen cents in July. Now I got a little trigger happy, and last night I know it's not the end of the month, but for uh, August, my profit per book has gone up like sixty cents, which I'm really happy about. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. It's set, so I'm at like. Let's call it seven dollars and seventy-five cents profit per book average right now. So let's see. Let's divide six thousand nine hundred and I think it was uh, what did I say thirty-seven divided by the amount of books I pulled out five hundred and forty. That's twelve dollars and eighty-four cents a book. So that's actually that's really good. Um, and what you need to realize is the price that you put your book at, it's, it, I mean, in a perfect world, you sell it and I make 1284 a book, that's not gonna happen. My repricer is gonna bring it down, down, down. So I can already tell you right now confidently, since my average price per book is about $5 less than I got on this batch, I'm probably gonna be within my average price per book, which is great. So um, all in all, definitely a profitable run. Um, but so here's the thing, here's the thing. 
I could have been like, you know what? That's not enough for me to want to go back there. Like, screw that. I'm not going to work with this guy anymore. He gave me a bunch of trash. Actually, quite the contrary. So why not talk to them and see what they can do for the next batch? So what I said was, hey, um, you know, as, respect, as respectfully, respectfully as you can, you just go, look, I got a lot of trash. Um, here's photos. I took photos. Um, I got I got a crap ton of encyclopedias, like a ton of encyclopedias and several of them. So I said, look, this is what I got. He's like, yeah, I know. Like, that's why I originally gave you a couple more. I knew there was going to be a lot of stuff we have to work on in there. So basically, you know, we're talking. It's like, hey, um, give me some guidelines. I'll have my guys sort it exactly how you want it. Um, you know, so the future, you're a lot more happier. I want this to be a long-term relationship. Like that guy understands business. He's a really good guy. His name's Charles. And uh, so I'm super stoked about it. Cause now like I had a great, I had a good scan rate. I just didn't have a good group of books to go through. But if, if the quality of books is improving, going up and up and up and my scan rate staying somewhat, you know, decent in there, I'm gonna get more books. I'm gonna get more green books and the numbers are gonna get better and better. And if he can keep refining this source for me, this is gonna be a great, great long-term source. And on top of it, he has a an 18 wheeler and a half uh, every month that he can give me. So that's um, the minis, you can fit 66 per truck. So he has about a, a hundred, a truck and a half. He's got about a hundred Gaylords a month that he's gonna send me. So all in all, great. I think it's gonna be a great long-term relationship. I'm very happy about it. Um, on top of everything else, uh, he, he said that he would deliver them to me, which is huge for a thousand bucks. Um, I, think, I think that's totally worth my time uh, to pay him a thousand dollars or worth the money to pay him a thousand. I mean, it is really a two day trip. If you try and do it in a day, that's like 15, 16 hours. That's, I mean, just, you're going to be so burnt out and over that so quick. So I'm trying to get the cost per day about the same, um, to make this whole thing make sense. Um, so I'm trying to still work that out. Um, we're going to keep tweaking and refining as we go. Uh, he also, I also negotiated this next run he's bringing me uh so he's packing a 26 footer for this next run um and he can fit 36 in there it's uh so this is good information for people so a small gaylord is it fits on a pallet just like a big one and the dimensions of the length and the width are the same it's just the height that differs so in a 26 footer you can fit six long and two wide, so that's 20, that's 12 on the bottom, right? And then you can fit two more high with my size that I'm buying. So I can get, he's gonna bring me 36 Gaylords on Wednesday. And uh, basically I'm gonna pay way less for these ones that I paid for the beginning ones because what he said was, hey, look, do you want me to dump all these out and redo everything? I'm like, no, dude, no way. Like, that's way too much work for you. It's about a bunch of employee man hours. Like, I also want this to make sense and I'm not trying to make this a win-lose. Like, I wanna work with this guy. I think it's gonna be a great source. So I'm like, don't, don't throw him away. Just how about this? How about you just, instead of 43 of the last run, let's do $30. And uh, he's gonna let me know today, but I'm pretty sure that he's gonna be okay with that. So I'm gonna get uh, 36 times 30, that's 1,080. And I just wanna do this for full transparency as we're going. So 1,080, let's say I pay him another uh, 1,000 for the delivery. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and see if I can work the gas and the truck costs into the delivery. So it'll, he'll still make like $600 in his pocket for that delivery. Um, but anyways, all in it would be 2,080. Um, and then I would divide that by the amount of Gaylords I'm getting, which is 36, so it'd be $57.77 per Gay, which is great. That's great, especially if they are going to be better long-term. Um, and I'm willing to, 
work with him on that $1,000 um, markup he wants to do for the delivery and figure out something with gas and the rental. Because um, I'd be willing to pay up to like 70 a day just because I see the potential. So I hope all that helps, guys. Um, bottom line, you get a bad batch from someone, don't just write them off. See if you can work with them. See if they can go down on price. Uh, be transparent with your numbers. I mean, look, they're not in the same business as you. They're these guys are they're wholesalers. They're both. They, they these guys need to move books out. They're not interested on in selling online. Never have been. They know all about it. That's another thing. Like they they know. I told them from the start. I am an FBA seller. Why would you? Don't hide that. Like, tell people what you do. If they're like, oh, I don't want to sell to people like that, or I I already have guys that scan all my books. Like, great, then you didn't waste a trip. You know what it is. Don't bother, you know, going out there. Fine. But, um, you know, just put it out there. Don't be sketchy. Don't be hiding things. Just talk to them and tell them what you do. And, I mean, the whole point of business, it's supposed to be a win-win. You're supposed to set up relationships that are going to be great long-term. And uh, that's what we have here. And so, uh, yeah, any questions, throw them down below in the comments. Um, also, as always, you can email me at HaydenAquilon at gmail.com. And no one knows how to spell my last name. It's, in, it's my YouTube channel name, so just look at it there. Have a good day, guys. Talk to you later.